Under the highway, there was a channel that collected the water that overflowed from the fish farm. Most of the time, very little water flowed through this channel, and leaves absorbed it before it reached the river. But this year, there had been a lot of rain, and as a result, the water in the channel was able to reach the river. This weak current was enough to guide the salmon. It must have recognized the smell, followed it from the river, and made its way through the overflow channel, having to swim and crawl its way through the five to 10 centimeters deep water. And later, it had to find its way in a confusing system of water pipes in the channel. And even if it succeeded in getting that far, it would still have been stopped at the cover. It must have been squeezed in the concrete channel located inside this wooden track. But the salmon did not give up. It found the pipe, 12 centimeters in diameter, which connected this channel to the pool. It made its way through this pipe and finally came to its last obstacle. It overcame this obstacle by hitting its head against it with great force. So, at the end of this incredible journey, the salmon reached the little pool where it was born two years earlier. When officials of the fish farm realized what had happened, they wondered whether there were other salmon that had returned to their places of birth. In order to see what they might find, they took up the wooden planks and looked in the channel underneath. To their amazement, they found a total of 70 salmon, each with a tag from the fish farm. This extraordinary story of the salmon gives us an important proof of the creation. We can see that every stage of the journey made by the salmon was calculated. It is by itself a great wonder that there is a program that directs the salmon to return years later to the river in which it was born. Besides this, it is certainly not by chance that the salmon possesses a natural compass that allows it to find its way in the ocean, or that it has the most sensitive sense of smell in the world. All this shows that the salmon is a creature specially created for the migration decreed for it. The one who created the salmon with all its extraordinary capabilities is Allah, the creator of all living things and the Lord of all the worlds.
One of the most interesting creatures in nature is the honeybee, which offers us a perfect feast with the honey it produces. Honeybees live in colonies in hives they construct with great care. Inside each hive, there are thousands of small hexagonal combs made to store the honey. In order to fill these combs with honey, the bees have to collect nectar from flowers. This is indeed a painstaking task. The latest scientific research has revealed that in order to produce half a kilo of honey, the bees must visit about four million individual flowers. Finding these flowers is in itself a difficult job. For this, the bees appoint some scouts and foragers from among their number. How do forager bees find the way to flowers in tracts of land that are vast compared to their own size? How do they find their way back to the hive without getting lost? How do they explain to the other bees the way to the source of the flowers? When we examine these questions, we come up with some very interesting facts. On the screen, you see a bee that has discovered a source of flowers. The job of this forager bee is to return to the hive and inform the other bees of the place where it found the flowers. As soon as the forager bee returns to its hive, it starts to describe the location of the flower's source it has discovered to the other bees. First, it lets the other bees taste a small bit of the nectar it has collected from the flowers, which gives them information about its quality. Then it begins its main task, describing the direction to the flowers. It does this in a very interesting way, by dancing. The forager begins to dance in the middle of the hive by shaking its body. It is difficult to believe, but in the course of this dance, the shaking will give the other bees all the information about where the flowers are located. For example, if the dance is in straight lines towards the upper part of the hive, the source of nutrients is exactly in the direction of the sun. If the flowers are located in the opposite direction, the bee makes lines in that direction. Look, now the bee is dancing towards the right. This shows that the flower source is exactly 90 degrees to the right. And this forager bee is explaining to his nestmates a 45 degree inclination to the left of the sun. But there is a question. The bees explain the direction according to the position of the sun, but the sun is continually moving. Every four minutes, the sun moves one degree towards the west, which would lead one to expect that the bees would make an error. However, observations have shown that the bees take account of the sun's movement. As the forager bees give directions, every four minutes, the angle they describe moves one degree to the west. Thanks to this marvelous calculation, the bees never lose their way. The forager bees not only give information about the direction of the flowers, but also the distance to them. The duration of the dance and the number of vibrations let the other bees know the exact distance. They store just enough nutrients for this distance and then set out on the journey.